and Tarp here from RetroGamesCollector.com and uh, as it says up in the title above, uh, this is a an 8-bit computer fest. Hey. Uh, sorry 16-bit fans. Um, I'll start off with uh, my favourite of all. I'm actually loading Manic Miner on this CPC in the background there. Let's see if it actually loads, because I've had no luck at all loading anything on there this morning for some reason. And I think the uh, tape heads might need the line in or something. Oh, something's happening. Here we go. There's the loading screen anyway, so we're halfway there. Um, yes, uh, start off with uh, my favourite of all, and the, the thing that got me into retro gaming in the first place, ZX81. This was from, uh, I had a visit from my mate Will Woodvine in the week, uh, and he brought this along as a bit of a present for me. Uh, it's a US ZX81. Now, the US ZX81 differs from the UK ZX81 in that it had to comply with FCC regulations for um, RF emissions. Uh, much stricter in the US uh, than over here, uh, and everything has to be extra shielded. So, the US ZX81 has got, if I can open it up and show you, um, this silver, well, I'm guessing it's like silver paint on the inside, um, that's supposed to help with uh, shielding the RF emissions from the ZX81. It's like silver paint, and you can see the reflection in there. Um, Anybody who's opened a, a, a UK version uh, will know that um, the UK ones haven't got that shield in it. Also, I noticed there's this extra bit of, I don't know what it is, on there. I think that's to ground it against the shielding. Yeah, that's, that's, that, makes, that makes contact with the shielding on, uh, on the inside of here by the looks of it. So that's just to, uh, to make sure everything's... In contact with everything else. So there you go. Um, the other differences are it's um, the more notable differences are that it's got the FCC regulations printed out in there, which you wouldn't get on a UK one, and it's also got a switch. I'll line it up properly. It's also got a switch to switch between channel two and channel three. So uh, there you go, and that's all to comply with FCC regulations in America. Um, he also brought round this will. He also brought round uh, this Micro Polo Primer book, which I've been after for ages and is quite hard to get hold of. So I'm really grateful for that. Thank you, Will. Um, I've been looking on eBay, found a sticky on keyboard thing for my ZX81. Um, now. The ZX81 was renowned for having, for having a bad keyboard. It, uh, it's got a basically, it's got a membrane keyboard, so you can't actually feel whether you, it's not very tactile. You can't feel whether you press the keys or not, which was fine when I had little little hands in '81. Now I've got big fat fingers. It don't really work very well. So one of these on top um, lets you actually feel what the keys are. It's only, it's only an e bit of an Eth Robinson affair. You just stick it on with double-sided tape, basically, and. Um, it just little little plastic tabs on the bottom there, press down into the keys to make contact with them. Um, but you can actually feel what you're doing, which is the main main idea of it. Uh, plus, it looks pretty. It improves the look of the ZX81 a little bit with a bit of colour on there. I think. Um, yeah. What else did I get off eBay? I also bagged this Space Intruders, which I've been after for quite a while. By it's a very early title by Use and Consultants for the ZX81. Um, um, got that for eight pound fifty, which I thought was a decent price. Um, normally goes for anything up to fifteen pound. Um, sometimes a lot more, um, and that will go with uh, my other two really old use and titles, Putman and Pilot. Now this is normally in yellow, the Space Intruders. I don't know why it's in pink, the same as Putman. In this instance, they must have just run out of yellow paper that day. Maybe I don't know. Could be. Um, what else have we got? Right, let's move on to something not so 8-bit, just for a second. It finally came two years, four months since the Kickstarter started for this. And um, finally it's come, but I've got to say it was well worth the wait. It is absolutely beautiful. This thing, I've never seen printing like it in my life. It's basically a book of, um, it's probably not the best example actually, it's a book of arcade marquee artwork. Um, 
and it, uh, the, uh, I can't, you, you're not going to be able to see on this rubbish camera just how good this is. Um, the printing is absolutely amazing. The retouching that um, Tim has done on this book um, is just, just absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, he spent thousands of hours apparently retouching this, art, this artwork um, and he's done such an amazing job. Um, it's going to be for sale soon. Um, I don't know where to be honest, but it is going to be for general sale soon. So look out for it. It's well worth getting. Um, it's a lovely coffee table book. Um, bring back lots of memories, and uh, the artwork in it is just absolutely beautiful. Well, it's loaded. That's probably one of the first things that's loaded this morning for me. Turn that down a bit. That's a bit annoying. Oh, no, up down. There we go. I'll leave that going in the background there. That's Manic Miner on the Amstrad CPC 464. One of my faves. Not so good on the 464 as on the Spectrum, obviously, because everything is better on the Spectrum, as we know. Um, back to 8-bit stuff. What, 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 what first? I'm going to stay on the old ZX81 theme. eBay. Polys, inside the polys, what have we got? We've got a ZX81 in a fuller keyboard, but look at the condition, that's it, it's beautiful. An absolutely mint condition, fuller keyboard. Now these normally have got a lot of use, and the keys went all yellow and nasty, and but in this case, it's auto playing in the background there, um, in this case, it's just uh, amazing. It's uh, really, really good condition. So there we have it. The fuller, actually, it, that's not all. That's not all the story. The I did spot on the um, on the auction that uh, I don't know whether you can remember um, a couple of episodes ago. I was talking about ZX eighty ones, and that I was after. Um, old ones, uh, early ones. Well, this one's an early one in here. It's got a kludged ROM on it, which means it's got the um, factory corrected ROM on it. Um, so it's an early ZX81. So I'm quite pleased to get that early ZX81 inside a fuller keyboard. I think it cost me 34 quid posted. So I was well chuffed for that. They normally go for much, much more. I've seen them go for £100 pound the fuller keyboards before now. So Happy, happy, happy. Um, what else did we get? We got a Commodore 16. We did. We did. We got a Commodore 16 and added to the collection. That looks fantastic next to my Vic 20 and my C64 up there, which are all exactly the same shape, but different colours, and they look great next to each other. Really good. That's in amazing condition. Really nice. And I can also use my SD2 IEC card on that, so not for that. What's happening? Oh, Skylab landing bay. There you go. Wondered what the noise was. Um, yeah. So, pleased with that. I also got myself, which I wasn't as pleased with when it came, I'll tell you why in a second, uh, this 6128, uh, Amstrad CPC 6128. At first I didn't think it was working. Plugged it in, didn't work. Thought, what the hell's going on? Uh, a dry switch, basically. So, I'll fix that. That's working fine now. But the thing, has, and I saw the photographs on eBay before it was sent, and it was definitely this machine. It was fine when it left the guy. Well, there you can see a big crack in it there. Yeah, I think I can repair that so you can hardly see it, but I'm not very pleased that it's got a great big crack in. Thank you for that, Mr. Posty. Uh, what else did we get? We got a big old box from my Aquarius. Check that out, guys. I'll put it the right way up. There we go. I've got all the bits for this apart from. Got one of the rom one of the ram packs, I think. I haven't got one of the ram packs, which you can see down there. Um, pretty much got everything else in this pack. So, and I saw this empty box going f on eBay, so I can put all the other boxes. All the all my stuff's boxed, so I can put all those boxes inside this box, and I've got the full set then. So there you go, great big massive family computer system box for the Aquarius. Happy, happy with that. And what else have we got now? We have got TRS-80. Um, 
Now this is um, the star of the show really. Um, 1977, uh, probably one of the first home computers um, that really made it. Um, more, more in the States uh, than over here. Um, but uh, I got this off my mate Dana. Um, Dana Meddins, uh, Danestat83 on YouTube. Check his channel out, he does some good stuff. Um, and there you go, we've got uh, a TRS-80 for the collection. That'll sit nice, nicely next to my uh, Coco one, which uh, I added um, three or four months ago, was it? Late last year. So um, that'll sit ne nicely next to my Coco one. And that, I do believe, so look around because I've got a, I had a lot of stuff. No, nope, that is that. Um, a quick, uh, quick one this time because I've got to get off and do stuff. Um, have a quick swig out of my Wonderland Dizzy Mug. Oh, splendid! Um, and thanks for watching, guys. Uh, subscribe and like if indeed you do like. And uh, I'll see you next time. Until then, keep it retro.